Florida, Wikipedia Audio Florida, Spanish for Land of Flowers is the southernmost contiguous state in the United States. The state is bordered to the west by the Gulf of Mexico, to the northwest by Alabama, to the north by Georgia, to the east by the Atlantic Ocean, and to the south by the Straits of Florida. Florida is the 22nd most extensive, the third most populous, and the eighth most densely populated of the U.S. states. Jacksonville is the most populous municipality in the state and the largest city by area in the contiguous United States. The Miami metropolitan area is Florida's most populous urban area. Tallahassee is the state's capital. About two-thirds of Florida occupies a peninsula between the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Florida has the longest coastline in the contiguous United States, approximately 1,350 miles, not including the contribution of the many barrier islands. It is the only state that borders both the Gulf of Mexico and the Atlantic Ocean. Much of the state is at or near sea level and is characterized by sedimentary soil. Florida has the lowest high point of any U.S. state. The climate varies from subtropical in the north to tropical in the south. The American alligator, American crocodile, Florida panther, and manatee can be found in Everglades National Park in the southern part of the state. Along with Hawaii, Florida is one of only two states that has a tropical climate, and is the only continental U.S. state with a tropical climate. Since the first European contact was made in 1513 by Spanish explorer Juan Ponce de Leon who named it Florida, informally La Florida Land of Flowers upon landing there in the Easter season, Pascua Florida Florida was a challenge for the European colonial powers before it gained statehood in the United States in 1845. It was a principal location of the Seminole Wars against the Native Americans, and racial segregation after the American Civil War. History Today Florida is distinctive for its large Cuban expatriate community and high population growth, as well as for its increasing environmental issues. The state's economy relies mainly on tourism, agriculture, and transportation, which developed in the late 19th century. Florida is also world-renowned for amusement parks, orange crops, winter vegetables, the Kennedy Space Center, and as a popular destination for retirees. Florida's close proximity to the ocean influences many aspects of Florida culture and daily life. Florida is a reflection of influences and in multiple inheritance, African, European, indigenous, and Latino heritages can be found in the architecture and cuisine. Florida has attracted many writers such as Marjorie Kinnan Rawlings, Ernest Hemingway, and Tennessee Williams, and continues to attract celebrities and athletes. It is internationally known for golf, tennis, auto racing and water sports. Marine mammals, bottlenose dolphin, short-finned pilot whale, North Atlantic right whale, West Indian manatee, Mammals, Florida Panther, Northern River Otter, Mink, Eastern Cottontail Rabbit, Marsh Rabbit, Raccoon, Striped Skunk, Squirrel, White-tailed Deer, Key Deer, Bobcats, Gray Fox, Coyote, Wild Boar, Florida Black Bear, Nine-Banded Armadillos, Virginia Opossum, Reptiles, Eastern Diamondback and Pygmy Rattlesnakes, Gopher Tortoise, Green, and Leatherback Sea Turtles, and Eastern Indigo Snake. In 2012, there were about 1 million American alligators and 1,500 crocodiles, birds, peregrine falcon, 
bald eagle, northern caracara, snail kite, osprey, white and brown pelicans, sea gulls, hooping and sandhill cranes, roseate spoonbill, Florida scrub jay, and others. One subspecies of wild turkey, Meliagris gallopavo, namely subspecies Osceola, is found only in Florida. The state is a wintering location for many species of eastern North American birds, as a result of climate change. There have been small numbers of several new species normally native to cooler areas to the north, snowy owls, snow buntings, harlequin ducks, and razorbills. These have been seen in the northern part of the state. By the 16th century, major Native American groups included the Apalachee, the Timucua, the Ace, the Tocobaga, the Calusa, and the Tequesta. Florida was the first region of the continental United States to be visited and settled by Europeans. The earliest known European explorers came with the Spanish conquistador Juan Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon spotted and landed on the peninsula on April 2, 1513. He named the region La Florida. The story that he was searching for the Fountain of Youth is mythical and only appeared long after his death. In May 1539, Conquistador Hernando de Soto skirted the coast of Florida, searching for a deep harbor to land. He described seeing a thick wall of red mangroves spread mile after mile, some reaching as high as 70 feet, with intertwined and elevated routes making landing difficult. The Spanish introduced Christianity, cattle, horses, sheep, the Castilian language, and more to Florida. Spain established several settlements in Florida, with varying degrees of success. In 1559, Don Tristan de Luna y Ariano established a settlement at present-day Pensacola, making it the first attempted settlement in Florida, but it was mostly abandoned by 1561. In 1565, the settlement of St. Augustine was established under the leadership of Admiral and Governor Pedro Menendez de Aviles, creating what would become one of the oldest, continuously occupied European settlements in the continental U.S. and establishing the first generation of Floridanos and the government of Florida. Spain maintained tenuous control over the region by converting the local tribes to Christianity. The geographical area of Florida diminished with the establishment of English settlements to the north and French claims to the west. The English attacked St. Augustine, burning the city and its cathedral to the ground several times. Spain built the Castillo de San Marcos in 1672 and Fort Matanzas, Indiana 1742 to defend Florida's capital city from attacks, and to maintain its strategic position in the defense of the Captaincy General of Cuba and the Spanish West Indies. 73% English, 20% Spanish, 2% Haitian Creole other languages comprise less than 1% spoken by the state's population. Florida attracted numerous Africans and African Americans from adjacent British colonies who sought freedom from slavery. In 1738, Governor Manuel de Montiano established Fort Gracia Real de Santa Teresa de Mos near St. Augustine a fortified town for escaped slaves to whom Montiano granted citizenship and freedom in return for their service in the Florida militia, and which became the first free black settlement legally sanctioned in North America. In 1763, Spain traded Florida to the Kingdom of Great Britain for control of Havana, Cuba, which had been captured by the British during the Seven Years' War. 
It was part of a large expansion of British territory following their victory in the Seven Years' War. A large portion of the Floridano population left, taking along most of the remaining indigenous population to Cuba. The British soon constructed the King's Road connecting St. Augustine to Georgia. The road crossed the St. Johns River at a narrow point, which the Seminole called Waka Pilotka and the British named Cow Ford both names ostensibly reflecting the fact that cattle were brought across the river there. I-4, which spans 133 miles, bisects the state, connecting Tampa, Lakeland, Orlando, and Daytona Beach, connecting with I-75 in Tampa and I-95 in Daytona Beach, I-10 which spans 362 miles in Florida traverses the Panhandle, connecting Pensacola, Tallahassee, Lake City, and Jacksonville, with interchanges with I-75 in Lake City and I-95 in Jacksonville. It is the southernmost interstate in the United States terminating in Santa Monica with a total length of 2,460 miles, I-75 which spans 470 miles in Florida, enters the state near Lake City west of Jacksonville and continues southward through Gainesville, Ocala, Tampa's eastern suburbs, Bradenton, Sarasota, Fort Myers, and Naples, where it crosses the Alligator Alley as a toll road to Fort Lauderdale before turning southward and terminating in Hialeah-Miami Lakes having interchanges with I-10 in Lake City and I-4 in Tampa. It is the second longest north-south interstate with a total length of 1,786 miles and terminates at the Canadian border at Salt Ste. Marie, Michigan, I. Minus 95, which spans 382 miles in Florida, enters the state near Jacksonville and continues along the Atlantic coast through Daytona Beach, the Melbourne-Titusville, Palm Bay, Vero Beach, Fort Pierce, Port St. Lucie, Stewart, West Palm Beach, and Fort Lauderdale, before terminating in downtown Miami with interchanges with I-10 in Jacksonville and I-4 in Daytona Beach. There are four auxiliary routes associated with the interstate. It is the longest north-south interstate with a total length of 1924 miles and terminates at the Canadian border northeast of Holton, Maine. European Arrival the British divided and consolidated the Florida provinces into East Florida and West Florida, a division the Spanish government kept after the brief British period. The British government gave land grants to officers and soldiers who had fought in the French and Indian War in order to encourage settlement. In order to induce settlers to move to Florida, reports of its natural wealth were published in England. A large number of British settlers who were described as being energetic and of good character moved to Florida, mostly coming from South Carolina, Georgia, and England. There was also a group of settlers who came from the colony of Bermuda. This would be the first permanent English-speaking population in what is now Duval County, Baker County, St. Johns County and Nassau County. The British built good public roads and introduced the cultivation of sugar cane, indigo, and fruits as well the export of lumber. As a result of these initiatives northeastern Florida prospered economically in a way it never did under Spanish administration. Furthermore, the British governors were directed to call general assemblies as soon as possible in order to make laws for the Floridas and in the meantime they were with the advice of councils, to establish courts. This would be the first introduction of much of the English-derived legal system which Florida still has today including trial by jury, habeas corpus, and county-based government. 
neither East Florida nor West Florida would send any representatives to Philadelphia to draft the Declaration of Independence. Florida would remain a loyalist stronghold for the duration of the American Revolution. Spain regained both East and West Florida after Britain's defeat in the American Revolution and the subsequent Treaty of Versailles in 1783, and continued the provincial divisions until 1821. Defense of Florida's northern border with the United States was minor during the Second Spanish period. The region became a haven for escaped slaves and a base for Indian attacks against U.S. territories, and the U.S. pressed Spain for reform. Americans of English descent and Americans of Scots-Irish descent began moving into northern Florida from the backwoods of Georgia and South Carolina. Though technically not allowed by the Spanish authorities and the Floridan government, they were never able to effectively police the border region and the backwoods settlers from the United States would continue to immigrate into Florida unchecked. These migrants, mixing with the already present British settlers who had remained in Florida since the British period, would be the progenitors of the population known as Florida Crackers. These American settlers established a permanent foothold in the area and ignored Spanish authorities. The British settlers who had remained also resented Spanish rule, leading to a rebellion in 1810 and the establishment for 90 days of the so-called Free and Independent Republic of West Florida on September 23. After meetings beginning in June, rebels overcame the garrison at Baton Rouge and unfurled the flag of the new republic, a single white star on a blue field. This flag would later become known as the Bonnie Blue Flag. In 1810, parts of West Florida were annexed by proclamation of President James Madison, who claimed the region as part of the Louisiana Purchase. These parts were incorporated into the newly formed territory of Orleans. The U.S. annexed the Mobile District of West Florida to the Mississippi Territory in 1812. Spain continued to dispute the area, though the United States gradually increased the area it occupied. In 1812, a group of settlers from Georgia, with de facto support from the U.S. federal government, attempted to overthrow the Floridan government in the province of East Florida. The settlers hoped to convince Floridans to join their cause and proclaim independence from Spain, but the settlers lost their tenuous support from the federal government and abandoned their cause by 1813. Joining the United States, Indian Removal Slavery, War, and Disenfranchisement Seminoles based in East Florida began raiding Georgia settlements, and offering havens for runaway slaves. The United States Army led increasingly frequent incursions into Spanish territory, including the 1817-1818 campaign against the Seminole Indians by Andrew Jackson that became known as the First Seminole War. The United States now effectively controlled East Florida. Control was necessary according to Secretary of State John Quincy Adams because Florida had become a derelict open to the occupancy of every enemy, civilized or savage, of the United States, and serving no other earthly purpose than as a post of annoyance to them. 20th Century Growth Geography Climate Fauna Flora Florida had become a burden to Spain, which could not afford to send settlers or garrisons. Madrid therefore decided to cede the territory to the United States through the adams anis Treaty, which took effect in 1821. President James Monroe was authorized on March 3, 
1821 to take possession of East Florida and West Florida for the United States and provide for initial governance. Andrew Jackson, on behalf of the U.S. federal government, served as a military commissioner with the powers of governor of the newly acquired territory for a brief period. On March 30, 1822, the U.S. Congress merged East Florida and part of West Florida into the Florida Territory. By the early 1800s, Indian removal was a significant issue throughout the southeastern U.S. and also in Florida. In 1830, the U.S. Congress passed the Indian Removal Act and as settlement increased, pressure grew on the U.S. government to remove the Indians from Florida. Seminoles harbored runaway blacks, known as the Black Seminoles, and clashes between whites and Indians grew with the influx of new settlers. In 1832, the Treaty of Payne's Landing promised to the Seminoles lands west of the Mississippi River if they agreed to leave Florida. Many Seminole left at this time. Some Seminoles remained, and the U.S. Army arrived in Florida, leading to the Second Seminole War. Following the war, approximately 3,000 Seminole and 800 Black Seminole were removed to Indian Territory. A few hundred Seminole remained in Florida in the Everglades. Environmental Issues On March 3, 1845, Florida became the 27th state to join the United States of America. The state was admitted as a slave state and ceased to be a sanctuary for runaway slaves. Initially its population grew slowly. As European settlers continued to encroach on Seminole lands, and the United States intervened to move the remaining Seminoles to the west, the Third Seminole War resulted in the forced removal of most of the remaining Seminoles, although hundreds of Seminole Indians remained in the Everglades. American settlers began to establish cotton plantations in North Florida, which required numerous laborers which they supplied by buying slaves in the domestic market. By 1860, Florida had only 140,424 people, of whom 44% were enslaved. There were fewer than 1,000 free African Americans before the American Civil War. In January 10, 1861, Nearly all delegates in the Florida legislature approved an ordinance of secession, declaring Florida to be a sovereign and independent nation and apparent reassertion to the preamble in Florida's Constitution of 1838, in which Florida agreed with Congress to be a free and independent state. Although not directly related to the issue of slavery, the ordinance declared Florida's secession from the Union, allowing it to become one of the founding members of the Confederate States, a looser union of states. The Confederal Union received little help from Florida, the 15,000 men it offered were generally sent elsewhere. The largest engagements in the state were the Battle of Olusti, on February 20, 1864 and the Battle of Natural Bridge, on March 6, 1865. Both were Confederate victories. The war ended in 1865. Following the American Civil War, Florida's congressional representation was restored on June 25, 1868 albeit forcefully after radical reconstruction and the installation of unelected government officials under the final authority of federal military commanders. After the reconstruction period ended in 1876, white Democrats regained power in the state legislature. In 1885 they created a new constitution, followed by statutes through 1889 that disfranchised most blacks and many poor whites. 
Until the mid-20th century, Florida was the least populous state in the southern United States. In 1900, its population was only 528,542, of whom nearly 44% were African American, the same proportion as before the Civil War. The boll weevil devastated cotton crops. Geology 40,000 blacks, roughly one-fifth of their 1900 population, left the state in the Great Migration. They left due to lynchings and racial violence, and for better opportunities. Disfranchisement for most African Americans in the state persisted until the civil rights movement of the 1960s gained federal legislation in 1965 to enforce protection of their constitutional suffrage. Historically, Florida's economy has been based primarily upon agricultural products such as cattle, sugar cane, citrus fruits, tomatoes, and strawberries. Demographics Economic prosperity in the 1920s stimulated tourism to Florida and related development of hotels and resort communities. Combined with its sudden elevation in profile was the Florida land boom of the 1920s, which brought a brief period of intense land development. Devastating hurricanes in 1926 and 1928 followed by the Great Depression, brought that period to a halt. Florida's economy did not fully recover until the military buildup for World War II. In 1939, Florida was described as still very largely an empty state. Subsequently, the growing availability of air conditioning, the climate, and a low cost of living made the state a haven. Migration from the Rust Belt and the Northeast sharply increased Florida's population after 1945. In recent decades, more migrants have come for the jobs in a developing economy. Population Settlements Ancestry With a population of more than 18 million according to the 2010 census, Florida is the most populous state in the southeastern United States and the third most populous in the United States. Key West Historic District Laura Street in downtown Jacksonville The Florida House on Capitol Hill, or Embassy of Florida in D.C. Historic Eber City in Tampa the downtown Miami Historic District has some of the oldest buildings in Miami. Much of the state of Florida is situated on a peninsula between the Gulf of Mexico, the Atlantic Ocean and the Straits of Florida. Spanning two time zones, it extends to the northwest into a panhandle, extending along the northern Gulf of Mexico. It is bordered on the north by the states of Georgia and Alabama, and on the west, at the end of the panhandle, by Alabama. It is the only state that borders both the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. Florida is west of the Bahamas and 90 miles north of Cuba. Florida is one of the largest states east of the Mississippi River and only Alaska and Michigan are larger in water area. The water boundary is 3 nautical miles offshore in the Atlantic Ocean and 9 nautical miles offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. At 345 feet above mean sea level, Britain Hill is the highest point in Florida and the lowest high point of any U.S. state. Much of the state south of Orlando lies at a lower elevation than northern Florida, and is fairly level. Much of the state is at or near sea level. However, some places such as Clearwater have promontories that rise 50 to 100 feet above the water. Much of central and north Florida, typically 25 miles or more away from the coastline, have rolling hills with elevations ranging from 100 to 250 feet. 
The highest point in Peninsular Florida, Sugarloaf Mountain, is a 312-foot peak in Lake County. On average, Florida is the flattest state in the United States. The climate of Florida is tempered somewhat by the fact that no part of the state is distant from the ocean. North of Lake Okeechobee, the prevalent climate is humid subtropical, while areas south of the lake have a true tropical climate. Mean high temperatures for late July are primarily in the low 90s Fahrenheit. Mean low temperatures for early to mid-January range from the low 40s Fahrenheit in North Florida to above 60 degrees Fahrenheit from Miami on southward. With an average daily temperature of 70.7 degrees Fahrenheit, it is the warmest state in the U.S. In the summer, high temperatures in the state seldom exceed 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Several record cold maxima have been in the 30s degree F and record lows have been in the 10s. These temperatures normally extend at most a few days at a time in the northern and central parts of Florida. South Florida, however, rarely encounters freezing temperatures. The hottest temperature ever recorded in Florida was 109 degrees Fahrenheit, which was set on June 29, 1931 in Monticello. The coldest temperature was 2 degrees F, on February 13, 1899, just 25 miles away, in Tallahassee. Due to its subtropical and tropical climate, Florida rarely receives measurable snowfall. However, on rare occasions, a combination of cold moisture and freezing temperatures can result in snowfall in the farthest northern regions. Frost, which is more common than snow, sometimes occurs in the panhandle. The USDA plant hardiness zones for the state range from Zone 8A in the inland western panhandle to Zone 11B in the lower Florida Keys. Florida's nickname is the Sunshine State, but severe weather is a common occurrence in the state. Central Florida is known as the lightning capital of the United States, as it experiences more lightning strikes than anywhere else in the country. Florida has one of the highest average precipitation levels of any state, in large part because afternoon thunderstorms are common in much of the state from late spring until early autumn. A narrow eastern part of the state including Orlando and Jacksonville receives between 2,400 and 2,800 hours of sunshine annually. The rest of the state, including Miami, receives between 2,800 and 3,200 hours annually. Florida leads the United States in tornadoes per area, but they do not typically reach the intensity of those in the Midwest and Great Plains. Hail often accompanies the most severe thunderstorms. Hurricanes pose a severe threat each year during the June 1 to November 30 hurricane season particularly from August to October. Florida is the most hurricane-prone state, with subtropical or tropical water on a lengthy coastline. Of the Category 4 or higher storms that have struck the United States, 83% have either hit Florida or Texas. From 1851 to 2006, Florida was struck by 114 hurricanes, 37 of them major category 3 and above. It is rare for a hurricane season to pass without any impact in the state by at least a tropical storm. In 1992, Florida was the site of what was then the costliest weather disaster in U.S. history, Hurricane Andrew which caused more than $25 billion in damages when it struck during August, it held that distinction until 2005, when Hurricane Katrina surpassed it, and it has since been surpassed by six other hurricanes. Andrew is currently the second costliest hurricane in Florida's history. 
Hurricane Wilma, the third most expensive hurricane in Florida's history, made landfall just south of Marco Island in October 2005. Wilma was responsible for about $21 billion in damages in Florida. Although many tropical storms would continue to affect the state after Wilma, it would be 11 years until the next hurricane, Hurricane Hermine struck the state, and 12 years until the next major hurricane, Hurricane Irma. After devastating multiple Caribbean islands as one of the most powerful Category 5 hurricanes ever recorded, Irma struck the Florida Keys as a Category 4 hurricane and made a second Florida landfall in Marco Island as a Category 3 hurricane. While Irma's damage in Florida was far less than what was originally feared, it was still incredibly destructive causing at least $50 billion in damages to Florida alone and around $66.8 billion in total, including damages to the many islands that were impacted. This made it the costliest hurricane in Florida's history and the fifth costliest hurricane ever. The Royal Poinciana grows in South Florida and blooms in the summer, an indication of South Florida's tropical climate. Summer afternoon showers from the Everglades traveling eastward over downtown Miami. Fall foliage occurs annually in Tallahassee. Snow is uncommon in Florida, but has occurred in every major Florida city at least once. Winter in Miami Miami's tropical climate makes it a top tourist destination in the winter. Florida is host to many types of wildlife including The only known calving area for the northern right whale is off the coasts of Florida and Georgia. The native bear population has risen from a historic low of 300 in the 1970s, to 3,000 in 2011. Since their accidental importation from South America into North America in the 1930s, the red imported fire ant population has increased its territorial range to include most of the southern United States, including Florida. They are more aggressive than most native ant species and have a painful sting. A number of non-native snakes and lizards have been released in the wild. In 2010 the state created a hunting season for Burmese and Indian pythons, African rock pythons, green anacondas, and Nile monitor lizards. Green iguanas have also established a firm population in the southern part of the state. There are about 500,000 feral pigs in Florida. Key deer in the lower Florida Keys the Florida scrub jay is found only in Florida. West Indian manatee Florida panther, native of South Florida Leatherback sea turtle Hooping crane There are about 3,000 different types of wild flowers in Florida. This is the third most diverse state in the Union, behind California and Texas both larger states. Languages On the east coast of the state, mangroves have normally dominated the coast from Cocoa Beach southward, salt marshes from St. Augustine northward. From St. Augustine south to Cocoa Beach, the coast fluctuates between the two, depending on the annual weather conditions. Everglades National Park in South Florida Bahia Honda in the Florida Keys Ocala National Forest in Central and Northern Florida Timaquan Ecological and Historic Preserve in Northeast Florida Religion Florida is a low per capita energy user. It is estimated that approximately 4% of energy in the state is generated through renewable resources. Florida's energy production is 6% of the nation's total energy output, 
while total production of pollutants is lower, with figures of 6% for nitrogen oxide, 5% for carbon dioxide, and 4% for sulfur dioxide. All potable water resources have been controlled by the state government through five regional water authorities since 1972. Governance Red tide has been an issue on the southwest coast of Florida, as well as other areas. While there has been a great deal of conjecture over the cause of the toxic algae bloom, there is no evidence that it is being caused by pollution or that there has been an increase in the duration or frequency of red tides. The Florida panther is close to extinction. A record 23 were killed in 2009 predominantly by automobile collisions, leaving about 100 individuals in the wild. The Center for Biological Diversity and others have therefore called for a special protected area for the panther to be established. Manatees are also dying at a rate higher than their reproduction. Elections History Elections of 2000 to present Much of Florida has an elevation of less than 12 feet, including many populated areas. Therefore, it is susceptible to rising sea levels associated with global warming. The Atlantic beaches that are vital to the state's economy are being washed out to sea due to rising sea levels caused by climate change. The Miami Beach area close to the continental shelf, is running out of accessible offshore sand reserves. The Florida Peninsula is a porous plateau of karst limestone sitting atop bedrock known as the Florida Platform. The largest deposits of potash in the United States are found in Florida. Extended systems of underwater caves, sinkholes, and springs are found throughout the state and supply most of the water used by residents. The limestone is topped with sandy soils deposited as ancient beaches over millions of years as global sea levels rose and fell. During the last glacial period, lower sea levels and a drier climate revealed a much wider peninsula, largely savanna. The Everglades, an enormously wide, slow-flowing river encompasses the southern tip of the peninsula. Sinkhole damage claims on property in the state exceeded a total of $2 billion from 2006 through 2010. Statutes Law Enforcement Economy Personal Income Real Estate Tourism Agriculture and Fishing Industry Mining Government Health Architecture Media Education Primary and Secondary Education Universities Florida is tied for last place as having the fewest earthquakes of any U.S. state. Earthquakes are rare because Florida is not located near any tectonic plate boundaries. The United States Census Bureau estimates that the population of Florida was 20,271,272 on July 1, 2015 a 7.82% increase since the 2010 United States Census. The population of Florida in the 2010 Census was 18,801,310. Florida was the seventh fastest growing state in the U.S. in the 12-month period ending July 1, 2012. In 2010, the center of population of Florida was located between Fort Meade and Frostproof. The center of population has moved less than 5 miles to the east and approximately 1 mile to the north between 1980 and 2010 and has been located in Polk County since the 1960 census.
the population exceeded 19.7 million by December 2014, surpassing the population of the state of New York for the first time. Florida contains the highest percentage of people over 65. There were 186,102 military retirees living in the state in 2008. About two-thirds of the population was born in another state, the second highest in the U.S. In 2010, undocumented immigrants constituted an estimated 5.7% of the population. This was the sixth highest percentage of any U.S. state. There were an estimated 675,000 illegal immigrants in the state in 2010. A 2013 Gallup poll indicated that 47% of the residents agreed that Florida was the best state to live in. Results in other states ranged from a low of 18% to a high of 77%. The legal name in Florida for a city, town, or village is municipality. In Florida there is no legal difference between towns, villages, and cities. In 2012, 75% of the population lived within 10 miles of the coastline. The largest metropolitan area in the state as well as the entire southeastern United States is the Miami metropolitan area, with about 6.06 .06 million people. The Tampa Bay area, with over 3.02 million people, is the second largest the Orlando metropolitan area, with over 2.44 million people, is the third, and the Jacksonville metropolitan area, with over 1.47 million people, is fourth. Transportation Florida has 22 metropolitan statistical areas defined by the United States Office of Management and Budget. 43 of Florida's 67 counties are in a MSA. Hispanic and Latinos of any race made up 22.5% of the population in 2010. As of 2011, 57% of Florida's population younger than age 1 were minorities. In 2010, 6.9% of the population considered themselves to be of only American ancestry. Many of these were of English or Scotch-Irish descent, however, their families have lived in the state for so long, that they choose to identify as having American ancestry or do not know their ancestry. In the 1980 United States Census the largest ancestry group reported in Florida was English with 2,232,514 Floridians claiming that they were of English or mostly English American ancestry. Some of their ancestry went back to the original 13 colonies. Highways As of 2010 those of European ancestry accounted for 57.9% of Florida's population. Out of the 57.9%, the largest groups were 12.0% German, 10.7% Irish, 8.8% English, 6.6% Italian, 2.8% Polish, and 2.7% French. White Americans of all European backgrounds are present in all areas of the state. In 1970, non-Hispanic whites were nearly 80% of Florida's population. Those of English and Irish ancestry are present in large numbers in all the urban-slash-suburban areas across the state. Some native white Floridians, especially those who have descended from longtime Florida families, may refer to themselves as Florida crackers, others see the term as a derogatory one. Like whites in most other states of the southern U.S., they descend mainly from English and Scots-Irish settlers, as well as some other British-American settlers. As of 2010, 
those of Hispanic or Latino ancestry accounted for 22.5% of Florida's population. Out of the 22.5%, the largest groups were 6.5% Cuban, 4.5% Puerto Rican, 3.3% Mexican, and 1.6% Colombian. Florida's Hispanic population includes large communities of Cuban Americans in Miami and Tampa, Puerto Ricans in Orlando and Tampa, and Mexican slash Central American migrant workers. The Hispanic community continues to grow more affluent and mobile. As of 2011, 57.0% of Florida's children under the age of one belonged to minority groups. Florida has a large and diverse Hispanic population, with Cubans and Puerto Ricans being the largest groups in the state. Nearly 80% of Cuban Americans live in Florida, especially South Florida where there is a long-standing and affluent Cuban community. Florida has the second-largest Puerto Rican population after New York, as well as the fastest growing in the nation. Puerto Ricans are more widespread throughout the state, though the heaviest concentrations are in the Orlando area of central Florida. Airports As of 2010, those of African ancestry accounted for 16.0% of Florida's population, which includes African Americans. Out of the 16.0%, 4.0% were West Indian or Afro-Caribbean American. During the early 1900s, black people made up nearly half of the state's population. In response to segregation, disfranchisement, and agricultural depression, many African Americans migrated from Florida to northern cities in the Great Migration, in waves from 1910 to 1940 and again starting in the later 1940s. They moved for jobs, better education for their children and the chance to vote and participate in society. By 1960 the proportion of African Americans in the state had declined to 18%. Conversely large numbers of northern whites moved to the state. Today, Large concentrations of black residents can be found in northern and central Florida. Aside from blacks descended from African slaves brought to the southern U.S., there are also large numbers of blacks of West Indian, recent African, and Afro-Latino immigrant origins, especially in the Miami-slash-South Florida area. In 2016, Florida had the highest percentage of West Indians in the United States at 4.5%, with 2.3% from Haitian ancestry, 1.5% Jamaican, and 0.2% Bahamian, with the other West Indian groups making up the rest. Intercity Rail As of 2010, those of Asian ancestry accounted for 2.4% of Florida's population. In 1988 English was affirmed as the state's official language in the Florida Constitution. Spanish is also widely spoken, especially as immigration has continued from Latin America. 20% of the population speak Spanish as their first language. 27% of Florida's population reports speaking a mother language other than English, and more than 200 first languages other than English are spoken at home in the state. The most common languages spoken in Florida as a first language in 2010 are Florida is mostly Christian, although there is a large irreligious and relatively significant Jewish community. Protestants account for almost half of the population, but the Catholic Church is the largest single denomination in the state mainly due to its large Hispanic population and other groups like Haitians. Protestants are very diverse, although Baptists, Methodists, 
Pentecostals and non-denominational Protestants are the largest groups. There is also a sizable Jewish community in South Florida. This is the largest Jewish population in the southern U.S. and the third largest in the U.S. behind those of New York and California. Public Transit In 2010, the three largest denominations in Florida were the Catholic Church, the Southern Baptist Convention, and the United Methodist Church. The Pew Research Center survey in 2014 gave the following religious makeup of Florida. Sports The basic structure, duties, function, and operations of the government of the state of Florida are defined and established by the Florida Constitution, which establishes the basic law of the state and guarantees various rights and freedoms of the people. The state government consists of three separate branches, judicial, executive, and legislative. The legislature enacts bills, which, if signed by the governor, become law. Sister States The Florida Legislature comprises the Florida Senate, which has 40 members, and the Florida House of Representatives which has 120 members. The current governor of Florida is Rick Scott. The Florida Supreme Court consists of a chief justice and six justices. Florida has 67 counties. Some reference materials may show only 66 because Duval County is consolidated with the city of Jacksonville. There are 379 cities in Florida that report regularly to the Florida Department of Revenue, but there are other incorporated municipalities that do not. The state government's primary source of revenue is sales tax. Florida does not impose a personal income tax. The primary revenue source for cities and counties is property tax. Unpaid taxes are subject to tax sales which are held in May and are highly popular. Bibliography There were 800 federal corruption convictions from 1988 to 2007, more than any other state. From 1952 to 1964, most voters were registered Democrats but the state voted for the Republican presidential candidate in every election except for 1964. The following year, Congress passed and President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Voting Rights Act of 1965, providing for oversight of state practices and enforcement of constitutional voting rights for African Americans and other minorities in order to prevent the discrimination and disenfranchisement that had excluded most of them for decades from the political process. From the 1930s through much of the 1960s, Florida was essentially a one-party state dominated by white conservative Democrats who together with other Democrats of the Solid South, exercised considerable control in Congress. They have gained slightly less federal money from national programs than they have paid in taxes. Since the 1970s, conservative white voters in the state have largely shifted from the Democratic to the Republican Party. Though the majority of registered voters in Florida are Democrats, it has continued to support Republican presidential candidates through the 20th century, except in 1976 and 1996, when the Democratic nominee was from the South. In the 2008 and 2012 presidential elections, Barack Obama carried the state as a Northern Democrat, attracting high voter turnout especially among the young, independents, and minority voters, of whom Hispanics comprise an increasingly large proportion. 2008 marked the first time since 1932, when Franklin D. Roosevelt carried the state, that Florida was carried by a Northern Democrat for president.
The first post-Reconstruction era Republican elected to Congress from Florida was William C. Kramer in 1954 from Pinellas County on the Gulf Coast, where demographic changes were underway. In this period, African Americans were still disenfranchised by the state's constitution and discriminatory practices, in the 19th century they had made up most of the Republican Party. Kramer built a different Republican Party in Florida, attracting local white conservatives and transplants from northern and midwestern states. In 1966 Claude R. Kirk, Jr. was elected as the first post-Reconstruction Republican governor, in an upset election. In 1968 Edward J. Gurney, also a white conservative, was elected as the state's first post-Reconstruction Republican U.S. Senator. In 1970 Democrats took the governorship and the open U.S. Senate seat, and maintained dominance for years. Since the mid-20th century, Florida has been considered a bellwether, voting for 13 successful presidential candidates since 1952. It voted for the loser only three times. In 1998, Democratic voters dominated areas of the state with a high percentage of racial minorities and transplanted white liberals from the northeastern United States, known colloquially as snowbirds. South Florida and the Miami metropolitan area are dominated by both racial minorities and white liberals. Because of this, the area has consistently voted as one of the most democratic areas of the state. The Daytona Beach area is similar demographically and the city of Orlando has a large Hispanic population, which has often favored Democrats. Republicans, made up mostly of white conservatives, have dominated throughout much of the rest of Florida, particularly in the more rural and suburban areas. This is characteristic of its voter base throughout the Deep South. The fast-growing I-4 corridor area, which runs through central Florida and connects the cities of Daytona Beach, Orlando, and Tampa-St. Petersburg, has had a fairly even breakdown of Republican and Democratic voters. The area is often seen as a merging point of the conservative northern portion of the state and the liberal southern portion, making it the biggest swing area in the state. Since the late 20th century, the voting results in this area, containing 40% of Florida voters, has often determined who will win the state of Florida in presidential elections. The Democratic Party has maintained an edge in voter registration, both statewide and in 40 of the 67 counties, including Miami-Dade, Broward, and Palm Beach counties, the state's three most populous. In 2000, George W. Bush won the U.S. presidential election by a margin of 271-266 in the Electoral College. Of the 271 electoral votes for Bush, 25 were cast by electors from Florida. The Florida results were contested and a recount was ordered by the court, with the results settled in a court decision. Reapportionment following the 2010 United States Census gave the state two more seats in the House of Representatives. The legislature's redistricting announced in 2012, was quickly challenged in court, on the grounds that it had unfairly benefited Republican interests. In 2015, the Florida Supreme Court ruled on appeal that the congressional districts had to be redrawn because of the legislature's violation of the fair district amendments to the state constitution passed in 2010. It accepted a new map in early December 2015. The political makeup of congressional and legislative districts has enabled Republicans to control the governorship and most statewide elective offices, and 17 of the state's 27 seats in the 2012 House of Representatives. 
Florida has been listed as a swing state in presidential elections since 1950, voting for the losing candidate once in that period of time. In the closely contested 2000 election, the state played a pivotal role. Out of more than 5.8 million votes for the two main contenders Bush and Al Gore, around 500 votes separated the two candidates for the all-decisive Florida electoral votes that landed Bush the election win. Florida's felony disenfranchisement law is more severe than most European nations or other American states. A 2002 study in the American Sociological Review concluded that if the state's 827,000 disenfranchised felons had voted at the same rate as other Floridians, Democratic candidate Al Gore would have won Florida and the presidency by more than 80,000 votes. In 2008, Delegates of both the Republican Florida primary election and Democratic Florida primary election were stripped of half of their votes when the conventions met in August due to violation of both parties' national rules. In the 2010 elections, Republicans solidified their dominance statewide, by winning the governor's mansion, and maintaining firm majorities in both houses of the state legislature. They won four previously Democratic-held seats to create a 19-6 Republican majority delegation representing Florida in the Federal House of Representatives. In 2010, more than 63 percent of state voters approved the initiated Amendments 5 and 6 to the state constitution, to ensure more fairness in districting. These have become known as the Fair District Amendments. As a result of the 2010 United States Census, Florida gained two House of Representative seats in 2012. The legislature issued revised congressional districts in 2012, which were immediately challenged in court by supporters of the above amendments. The court ruled in 2014, after lengthy testimony that at least two districts had to be redrawn because of gerrymandering. After this was appealed, in July 2015 the Florida Supreme Court ruled that lawmakers had followed an illegal and unconstitutional process overly influenced by party operatives, and ruled that at least eight districts had to be redrawn. On December 2, 2015, a 5-2 majority of the court accepted a new map of congressional districts, some of which was drawn by challengers. Their ruling affirmed the map previously approved by Leon County Judge Terry Lewis, who had overseen the original trial. It particularly makes changes in South Florida. There are likely to be additional challenges to the map and districts. According to the Sentencing Project, the effect of Florida's felony disenfranchisement law is such that in 2014, more than 1 in 10 Floridians and nearly 1 in 4 African American Floridians are shut out of the polls because of felony convictions, although they had completed sentences and parole-slash-probation requirements. The state repealed mandatory auto inspection in 1981. In 1972, the state made personal injury protection auto insurance mandatory for drivers, becoming the second in the nation to enact a no-fault insurance law. The ease of receiving payments under this law is seen as precipitating a major increase in insurance fraud. Auto insurance fraud was the highest in the nation in 2011, estimated at close to $1 billion. Fraud is particularly centered in the Miami-Dade metropolitan and Tampa areas. Florida was ranked the fifth most dangerous state in 2009. Ranking was based on the record of serious felonies committed in 2008. The state was the sixth highest scammed state in 2010. It ranked first in mortgage fraud in 2009. In 2009, 
44% of highway fatalities involved alcohol. Florida is one of seven states that prohibit the open carry of handguns. This law was passed in 1987. According to the Federal Trade Commission, Florida has the highest per capita rate of both reported fraud and other types of complaints including identity theft complaints. In the 20th century, tourism, industry, construction, international banking, biomedical and life sciences, healthcare research, simulation training, aerospace, and defense, and commercial space travel have contributed to the state's economic development. The gross domestic product of Florida in 2016 was $926 billion. Its GDP is the fourth largest economy in the United States. In 2010, it became the fourth largest exporter of trade goods. The major contributors to the state's gross output in 2007 were general services, financial services, trade, transportation, and public utilities, manufacturing and construction respectively. In 2010-11, the state budget was $70.5 billion, having reached a high of $73.8 billion in 2006-07. Chief Executive Magazine named Florida the third best state for business in 2011. The economy is driven almost entirely by its 19 metropolitan areas. In 2004, they had a combined total of 95.7% of the state's domestic product. In 2011, Florida's per capita personal income was $39,563, ranking 27th in the nation. In February 2011, the state's unemployment rate was 11.5%. Florida is one of seven states that do not impose a personal income tax. Florida's constitution establishes a state minimum wage that is adjusted for inflation annually. As of January 1, 2017, Florida's minimum wage was $5.08 for tipped positions and $8.10 for non-tipped positions, which was higher than the federal rate of $7.25. Florida has four cities in the top 25 cities in the U.S. with the most credit card debt. The state also had the second highest credit card delinquency rate, with 1.45% of cardholders in the state more than 90 days delinquent on one or more credit cards. There were 2.4 million Floridians living in poverty in 2008. 18.4% of children 18 and younger were living in poverty. Miami is the sixth poorest big city in the United States. In 2010, over 2.5 million Floridians were on food stamps, up from 1.2 million in 2007. To qualify, Floridians must make less than 133% of the federal poverty level which would be under $29,000 for a family of four. In the early 20th century, land speculators discovered Florida, and businessmen such as Henry Plant and Henry Flagler developed railroad systems, which led people to move in, drawn by the weather and local economies. From then on, tourism boomed fueling a cycle of development that overwhelmed a great deal of farmland. Due to the huge payouts by the insurance industry as a result of the hurricane claims of 2004, homeowners insurance has risen 40% to 60% and deductibles have risen. At the end of the third quarter in 2008, Florida had the highest mortgage delinquency rate in the U.S., with 7.8% of mortgages delinquent at least 60 days. 
a 2009 list of national housing markets that were hard hit in the real estate crash included a disproportionate number in Florida. The early 21st century building boom left Florida with 300,000 vacant homes in 2009, according to state figures. In 2009, the U.S. Census Bureau estimated that Floridians spent an average 49.1% of personal income on housing-related costs, the third-highest percentage in the U.S. In the third quarter of 2009, there were 278,189 delinquent loans, 80,327 foreclosures. Sales of existing homes for February 2010 was 11,890, up 21% from the same month in 2009. Only two metropolitan areas showed a decrease in homes sold, Panama City and Brevard County. The average sales price for an existing house was $131,000. 7% decrease from the prior year. If you can't find something to do in Florida, you're just boring. Tourism makes up one of the largest sectors of the state economy, with nearly 1.4 million people employed in the tourism industry in 2016. In 2015, Florida broke the 100 million visitor mark for the first time in state history by hosting a record 105 million visitors and broke that record in 2016 with 112.8 million tourists. Florida has set tourism records for six consecutive years. Many beach towns are popular tourist destinations, particularly during winter and spring break although activist David Hogg has called for a statewide boycott in 2018 unless state legislators pass substantive gun reform. 23 million tourists visited Florida beaches in 2000, spending $22 billion. The public has a right to beach access under the public trust doctrine, but some areas have access effectively blocked by private owners for a long distance. Amusement parks, especially in the greater Orlando area, make up a significant portion of tourism. The Walt Disney World Resort is the most visited vacation resort in the world with over 50 million annual visitors, consisting of four theme parks, 27 themed resort hotels, nine non-Disney hotels, two water parks, four golf courses and other recreational venues. Other major theme parks in the area include Universal Orlando Resort, SeaWorld Orlando, and Busch Gardens Tampa. Agriculture is the second largest industry in the state. Citrus fruit, especially oranges, are a major part of the economy, and Florida produces the majority of citrus fruit grown in the United States. In 2006, 67% of all citrus, 74% of oranges, 58% of tangerines, and 54% of grapefruit were grown in Florida. About 95% of commercial orange production in the state is destined for processing. Citrus canker continues to be an issue of concern. From 1997 to 2013, the growing of citrus trees has declined 25%, from 600,000 acres to 450,000 acres. Citrus greening disease is incurable. A study states that it has caused the loss of $4.5 billion between 2006 and 2012. As of 2014, it was the major agricultural concern. Other products include sugarcane, strawberries, tomatoes, and celery. The state is the largest producer of sweet corn and green beans for the U.S. The Everglades Agricultural Area is a major center for agriculture. 
The environmental impact of agriculture, especially water pollution, is a major issue in Florida today. In 2009, fishing was a $6 billion industry, employing 60,000 jobs for sports and commercial purposes. Florida is the leading state for sales of powerboats. Boats sales totaled $1.96 billion in 2013. Phosphate mining, concentrated in the Bone Valley, is the state's third largest industry. The state produces about 75% of the phosphate required by farmers in the United States and 25% of the world supply with about 95% used for agriculture and 5% used for other products. After the watershed events of Hurricane Andrew in 1992, the state of Florida began investing in economic development through the Office of Trade, Tourism and Economic Development. Governor Jeb Bush realized that watershed events such as Andrew negatively impacted Florida's backbone industry of tourism severely. The office was directed to target medical-slash-biosciences among others. Three years later, the Scripps Research Institute announced it had chosen Florida for its newest expansion. In 2003, TSRI announced plans to establish a major science center in Palm Beach, a 364,000 square feet facility on 100 acres, which TSRI planned to occupy in 2006. Since the development of the federal NASA Merritt Island launch sites on Cape Canaveral in 1962, Florida has developed a sizable aerospace industry. Another major economic engine in Florida is the United States military. There are 24 military bases in the state, housing three unified combatant commands, United States Central Command in Tampa, United States Southern Command in Doral, and United States Special Operations Command in Tampa. Some 109,390 U.S. military personnel stationed in Florida, contributing, directly and indirectly, $52 billion a year to the state's economy. In 2009, there were 89,706 federal workers employed within the state. Tens of thousands more employees work for contractors who have federal contracts, including those with the military. In 2012, government of all levels was a top employer in all counties in the state, because this classification includes public school teachers and other school staff. School boards employ nearly one of every 30 workers in the state. The federal military was the top employer in three counties. There were 2.7 million Medicaid patients in Florida in 2009. The governor has proposed adding $2.6 billion to care for the expected 300,000 additional patients in 2011. The cost of caring for 2.3 million clients in 2010 was $18.8 .8 billion. This is nearly 30% of Florida's budget. Medicaid paid for 60% of all births in Florida in 2009. The state has a program for those not covered by Medicaid. In 2013, Florida refused to participate in providing coverage for the uninsured under the Affordable Care Act, popularly called Obamacare. The Florida legislature also refused to accept additional federal funding for Medicaid, although this would have helped its constituents at no cost to the state. As a result, Florida is second only to Texas in the percentage of its citizens without health insurance. Florida has the largest collection of Art Deco and Streamline Modern buildings in both the United States and the entire world most of which are located in the Miami metropolitan area, especially Miami Beach's Art Deco District, 
constructed as the city was becoming a resort destination. A unique architectural design found only in Florida is the post-World War II Miami Modern, which can be seen in areas such as Miami's Mimo Historic District. Being of early importance as a regional center of banking and finance, the architecture of Jacksonville displays a wide variety of styles and design principles. Many of state's earliest skyscrapers were constructed in Jacksonville, dating as far back as 1902, and last holding a state height record from 1974 to 1981. The city is endowed with one of the largest collections of prairie school buildings outside of the Midwest. Jacksonville is also noteworthy for its collection of mid-century modern architecture. Some sections of the state feature architectural styles including Spanish Revival, Florida Vernacular, and Mediterranean Revival. A notable collection of these styles can be found in St. Augustine, the oldest continuously occupied European established settlement within the borders of the United States. Florida's primary and secondary school systems are administered by the Florida Department of Education. School districts are organized within county boundaries. Each school district has an elected board of education that sets policy, budget, goals, and approves expenditures. Management is the responsibility of a superintendent of schools. The Florida Department of Education is required by law to train educators in teaching English for speakers of other languages. The State University System of Florida was founded in 1905, and is governed by the Florida Board of Governors. During the 2010 academic year, 312,216 students attended one of these 12 universities. The Florida College System comprises 28 public community and state colleges. In 2011-12, enrollment consisted of more than 875,000 students. As of 2017 the University of Central Florida, with over 64,000 students, is the largest university by enrollment in the United States. Florida's first private university, Stetson University, was founded in 1883. The Independent Colleges and Universities of Florida is an association of 28 private, educational institutions in the state. This association reported that their member institutions served over 121,000 students in the fall of 2006. In 2016, Florida charged the second lowest tuition in the nation for four years, $26,000 for in-state students, to $86,000 for out-of-state students. This compares with an average of $34,800 nationally for in-state students. Florida State University, Tallahassee University of Florida, Gainesville Florida Gulf Coast University, Fort Myers Flagler College, St. Augustine University of Miami, Coral Gables University of Central Florida, Orlando Florida's highway system contains 1,473 miles of interstate highway, and 9,934 miles of non-interstate highway, such as state highways and U.S. highways. Florida's interstates, state highways, and U.S. highways are maintained by the Florida Department of Transportation. In 2011, there were about 9,000 retail gas stations in the state. Floridians consume 21 million gallons of gasoline daily, ranking it third in national use. Motorists have the 45th lowest rate of car insurance in the U.S. 24% are uninsured. 
Drivers between 15 and 19 years of age averaged 364 car crashes a year per 10,000 licensed Florida drivers in 2010. Drivers 70 and older averaged 95 per 10,000 during the same time frame. A spokesperson for the Nonprofit Insurance Institute said that older drivers are more of a threat to themselves. Before the construction of routes under the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956, Florida began construction of a long cross-state toll road, Florida's Turnpike. The first section, from Fort Pierce south to the Golden Glades Interchange was completed in 1957. After a second section north through Orlando to Wildwood, and a southward extension around Miami to Homestead, it was finished in 1974. Florida's primary interstate routes include Florida has 131 public airports. Florida's seven large hub and medium hub airports, as classified by the FAA, are the following. Florida is served by Amtrak, operating numerous lines throughout, connecting the state's largest cities to points north in the United States and Canada. The busiest Amtrak train stations in Florida in 2011 were, Sanford, Orlando, Tampa Union Station, Miami, and Jacksonville. Sanford, in Greater Orlando, is the southern terminus of the auto train, which originates at Lorden, Virginia, south of Washington, D.C. Until 2005, Orlando was also the eastern terminus of the Sunset Limited, which travels across the southern United States via New Orleans, Houston, and San Antonio to its western terminus of Los Angeles. Florida is served by two additional Amtrak trains, which operate between New York City and Miami. Miami Central Station, the city's rapid transit, commuter rail, intercity rail, and bus hub, is under construction. The Florida Department of Transportation was preparing to build a high-speed rail between Tampa, Lakeland, and Orlando. This was to be the first phase of the Florida high-speed rail system. Soil work began in July 2010 and construction of the line was slated to begin in 2011, with the initial Tampa-Orlando phase completed by 2014. The second phase, would have extended the line to Miami. Governor Scott, however, refused federal funds and the project has been cancelled. All aboard Florida is a proposed higher-speed rail service that would run between Orlando and Miami at speeds up to 125 miles per hour. Its Miami to Coco portion is scheduled to open in 2016, with the final segment to Orlando opening in 2017. Florida has three NFL teams, two MLB teams, two NBA teams, two NHL teams, and one MLS team. Florida gained its first permanent major league professional sports team in 1966 when the American Football League added the Miami Dolphins. The state of Florida has given professional sports franchises some subsidies in the form of tax breaks since 1991. About half of all Major League Baseball teams conduct spring training in the state, with teams informally organized into the Grapefruit League. Throughout MLB history, other teams have held spring training in Florida. NASCAR begins all three of its major auto racing series in Florida at Daytona International Speedway in February, featuring the Daytona 500, and ends all three series in November at Homestead Miami Speedway. Daytona also has the Coke 0400 NASCAR race weekend around Independence Day in July. The 24 Hours of Daytona is one of the world's most prestigious endurance auto races.
the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg and Grand Prix of Miami have held Indy car races as well. Florida is a major golf hub. The PGA of America is headquartered in Palm Beach Gardens, the PGA Tour is headquartered in Ponte Vedra Beach, and the LPGA is headquartered in Daytona Beach. The Players' Championship, WGC Cadillac Championship, Arnold Palmer Invitational, Honda Classic and Valspar Championship are PGA Tour rounds. The Miami Masters is an ADP World Tour Masters 1000 and WTA Premier Tennis event, whereas the Delray Beach International Tennis Championships is an ADP World Tour 250 event. Minor League Baseball, Football, Basketball, Ice Hockey, Soccer, and Indoor Football teams are based in Florida. Three of the Arena Football League S teams are in Florida. Florida's universities have a number of collegiate sport programs, especially the Florida State Seminoles and Miami Hurricanes of the Atlantic Coast Conference, and the Florida Gators of the Southeastern Conference. Coordinates, 28 degrees 06 and 81 degrees 36 minutes west slash 28.1 degrees north 81.6 degrees west slash 28.1. 